Chinese lawmakers will gather in Beijing Thursday for their annual par parliamentary conference. The week-long event is known as the Two Sessions. The Chinese government is expected to outline the country's top priorities for the year ahead, but the meeting is generally symbolic, as delegates in attendance have very little say over the laws that they pass. For more on this, let's bring in CBSN contributor Isaac Stonefish. He's also the CEO and founder of the firm Strategy Risks. Isaac, so what issues are expected to be discussed during this conference? This is in some ways a victory lap for the ruling Chinese Communist Party. We're going to expect to see Chinese Chairman Xi talk about one of his signature initiatives about uh, really doing a, a full po poverty alleviation all across China. We're going to talk about declining birth rates. We're going to see some details come out about the numbers. But as you were saying, that this is really a lot about pageantry. It's a lot about reading the tea leaves, and it's a lot about seeing exactly the way certain things are phrased and then making assumptions based on that. It was interesting to have just had that conversation with Skyler at the White House about President Biden trying to even get members of his own party on board with his legislative agenda, to talking with you about Chairman Xi and, and how he has unanimous consent. Uh, but uh, it's interesting uh, in looking at, at those two uh, juxtaposed against one, one another. But there is an importance for, for all of our American viewers, because these talks might actually impact relations with the United States. Can you tell us about that? Definitely. The, the party is really good at presenting a united face, even though there are disagreements behind closed doors that we just don't see. And the way that this will impact Americans is it will give us a little bit more information on just how powerful Xi Jinping is and how powerful he's going to be. And I think that the general assumption is that the more powerful he is, the less likely he'll want to scale back some of the aggressions that he's been committing vis-a-vis -vis the United States. It, it feels like the more that she seems or takes control over the Chinese political system, the higher tensions will go. And in 2022, that's the year that, according to Chinese political tradition, Xi Jinping is supposed to step down. But right now, there's very little indications that he will, he will try to do so. Well, Secretary of State Tony Blinken says that the U.S.-China relationship will be the world's greatest geopolitical test of the 21st century. What are some of the Biden administration's top priorities when it comes to U.S.-China relations? So I've been impressed by the way the Biden administration has stayed true and tough to some of, you know, frankly, the only positive things that came out of the Trump administration, which was, a, I thought, a much smarter and a much more aggressive strategy against the Chinese Communist Party. And what we'll see in terms of priorities there is a way of reducing IP theft from Chinese state actors or Chinese companies against American companies, trying to make the trade relationship a little bit more, what people like to call fair, uh, either by rebalancing the trade deficit, which was a controversial Trump idea, but one that's still alive today, or allowing for recipro uh, reciprocal market access between the United States and China. The other one that he didn't mention uh, that much on this speech was the issue of climate change. And I think there's a real worry that Blinken and then also Special Advisor John Kerry will weaken some other policies towards China because they really want to push on climate change. And, and so far, Secretary of State Blinken hasn't been giving that indication, which is a relief to a lot of people who are watching this. Well, I want to follow up with you on that, Isaac, because, as you mentioned, the Trump administration had an often adversarial relationship with China. But President Biden really has yet has done very little to resolve some of these tensions. Can you explain, is that part of the Biden administration's strategy? It really seems to be. And I think one of the things the Biden administration is going to do better than the Trump administration is really try to focus this on the ruling Chinese Communist Party and make it very clear that the problems are not with the Chinese people, but with the ruling party. Um, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo did a good job of distinguishing the two and focusing on the Communist Party as opposed to Chinese people. Uh, Trump did not do a very good job of that. So I think what we're going to see is a continuation of a lot of the strategies that the Trump administration had but uh, much more careful and more respectful towards Chinese people, and also much more working together with U.S. allies across the globe, from South Korea, Japan, Australia, to Western Europe, and a lot of places in between. 
All right, Isaac Stonefish, always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you.